Hi, my name's Katie and a year ago I completed the Thrive programme by reading the Cure Your Metaphobia and Thrive book. I previously filmed the video just after, talking about how much the book had helped me and there was quite a lengthy description of how bad I used to be before, um, but I don't want this video to be like that. So if you're wanting to hear my full story, how bad my metaphobia used to be, what else I'd tried before Thrive and how I'd felt straight after um, finishing the book, then you should watch my previous video. But for this video I just want to tell you about the how the journey doesn't just end after you finish reading the book. It's only just the beginning really. I wanted to answer a couple of frequently asked questions. I get asked quite a lot since doing Thrive last year and I wanted to share some of the things that had happened to me that I never thought possible uh, to demonstrate the, that the knowledge and the skills that you gain doing Thrive, if used in all, all areas of your life, can give amazing results. Uh, combating emetophobia was really just the tip of the iceberg. So since fil finishing Thrive and filming my testimonial video I've had the best year of my life. I really have. I have achieved so much and met so many lovely people. Since then I'd been asked the same questions time and time again. Are you really cured of your phobia? How do you know that you are? And have you been sick since? Uh, the answer to these questions are quite simple really. Uh, no, I'm not scared of being sick. The best way I can think of to describe this was that I no longer fear it anymore than, I, than I'm scared of breaking a bone or falling down a flight of stairs. <laughs> I don't particularly want, want to break a bone or fall down a flight of stairs, but I don't live my life in fear anticipating that it's going to happen or avoiding situations. I know I can deal with it, recover and bounce back if all three of those things happen. Hopefully not all at once. <laughs> Um, I also no longer avoid foods, I don't have panic attacks, I don't carry around a kit filled with anti-emetic medications, wristbands, hand gels or mints. I feel confident in the fact that if I felt sick, I could deal with it. And lastly, no, I've not been sick since doing Thrive, and you know what, it could be another 10 years, it could happen tomorrow, but I don't need to be sick to know that I'm not afraid. Being sick was never really the issue anyway, it was about feeling out of control not feeling like I could cope in any situation, not just being sick, worrying about what other people thought of me and creating an unbelievable amount of unnecessary anticipatory anxiety about things. And I knew he was going to do that. <laughs> All those things um, I no, no longer do. Um, another question I get asked a lot is do I still process my positives or work on any of the other tasks in the book? And the answer to that is yes. Uh, a lot of things that have become habitual like my thinking and behaviours, um, but like every other human on the planet I have my down days as well. I have doubts and concerns and uh, get worried about things, but the huge difference between now and before is that I have a huge range of skills and coping strategies to, to be able to deal with life's ups and downs now and pick myself back up quicker, um, and that's the main thing really. Thriving isn't about being perfect. Um, Please don't worry that it's, you're striving to be like this pedestal type person. It's not like that. It's about believing in yourself, building up these coping strategies and bouncing back from adversities when they happen. The last question I get asked a lot is how do I know that I'm thriving? And like I said before, it's not about being perfect. Um, but I do worry less, I stress less, I panic much, much less. <laughs> and if I do get an anxious thought of any kind, I can acknowledge it quicker and I deal with it much more calmly. Um, I feel more capable in my choices and my coping skills. I have much higher self-esteem than I ever had before. I actually like and appreciate the person that I am and I care less about what other people think of me. That's not a bad thing, I just don't, I don't worry about what people think of me or fear being judged. Um, I can also do a lot so many more things that I used to avoid <laughs> and this isn't just phobia related this is much wider and in every er area of my life which is not what I expected from doing Thrive at the beginning I thought it was just going to be the phobia I was going to be focused on but it's amazing the amount that it's changed in every aspect of life um, I'd now like to share some of these experiences with you um, of things that I've done during the last year and how I use my new skills to achieve them firstly I had my first anxiety free flight ever that I ever had, <laughs> even before I had the phobia. Um, I had no pills, no bands, 
uh, there was no panic of any type. I just really enjoyed the, the flight. I wasn't worried about it. anybody thought. Um, if it wasn't looking around for anybody being sick, I wasn't worried about how my stomach was feeling. I just sat back, looked out the window and enjoyed the flight. Um, and it was quite a moment for me because I felt quite emotional um, when I was on the flight, just thinking, wow, this is just how easy life can be. Um, it was the main, it was the first thing that I came across last year after doing Thrive that I really felt the, the difference. Um, and on the flight, I was actually going down to visit my friend um, and we went to an adventure course together, uh, which was a huge achievement for me just going because I used to be the child hiding behind my mum's legs at the playground, not wanting to join in. Um, but here I was doing a, an assault course through the treetops, um, doing a zip wire. which I was absolutely terrified of all my life and I managed to make myself do that. And a 30 foot jump as well from a platform. Um, yeah, it was a quite a funny moment actually because the friend that I was with was Ree, who you'll have, maybe have seen her testimonial video. I remember we, we both said we weren't going to do the jump and it was fine because we'd achieved so much already and we were, we'd done the assault course and the zip wire and that was plenty to prove ourselves. But I, we decided to strap ourselves in and just have a look over this 30 foot jump. Um, and I just remember thinking, God, we've come this far. And I turned around to her and I said to her before I jumped, um, Ray, if we do this, we'll never be effing sick of ever being sick again. Ever be scared of ever being sick ever again. And I just leapt off and it was the best feeling ever. I just laughed my head off at the end. And at the bottom, it was so funny. Um, so that was a huge, huge achievement for me. Um, the next thing that came along was jury duty. Um, I had <laughs> been excused twice before. I mean, there's people who are my age who have never been asked for jury duty. This is the third time I've been asked. Um, and the first two times I managed to get a doctor's note due to an anxiety basis to get off. Um, but this time I was determined to do it. Um, and I got selected. <laughs> so I was sitting on jury duty for a week um, and actually quite enjoyed the process. Um, met quite a few really nice people in the jury um, and yeah it was just a life lesson and I'll probably never have to do it again um, but it came up at a good time in my life and proved a lot of things to me. Um, another thing I did during last year was pub public speaking. Um, filming a video is one thing but speaking to a room full of people is another um, and I spoke at two emetophobia seminars, um, one in person and one via Skype. Um, the Skype one was quite strange though because I was looking at them but they were all looking at me on a big screen so it was like being ignored by a room full of 12 people so it was quite funny, um, although they were listening to me. Um, but that was a great experience, I got to share my emetophobia story um, and really motivate and inspire people to pick up the book and, and help themselves as well so that was that felt really good to do um, and I really enjoyed it actually, I'd, I'd do it again. <laughs> um, another big fear of mine that I overcame as you'll see I had a lot of fears, um, was getting blood taken. I had it done when I was a child and hated the experience and I'd built it up into my head of being this thing that was so scary and terrifying. Um, yeah, and the picture really wasn't that, wasn't real. Um, I was a little nervous the first time I went because, you know, it was the first time going out of my comfort zone with, with needles. Um, but I was so determined to do it and I used all my visualisation techniques um, running up to it. Um, challenged any own helpful thinking using all these skills I learned through the book and I had to get it done three times within a month I think it was and by the third time I was talking away to the nurse and hadn't really even noticed that it had been done so um, that's a huge a huge difference. Um, I had my also had my first fearless November um, you might wonder why November should be fearful anyway but I had once been sick in November and for some reason it stuck with me and I just, every time November came it was like the beginning of bug season and I would just be terrified through the entire of November. I'd be, that's when I'd be taking my most anti-emetic pills, uh, panicking most and yeah this is the first November I didn't have that and I just loved November. I was watching the trees coming, the leaves coming off the trees and just enjoying autumn and the build up to Christmas and things for the first time ever. Um, it felt really good. 
And the last and probably biggest achievement of last year was getting fillings replaced without any anti-anxiety medication whatsoever. Um, just to let you know how bad my fear of the dentist was and my fear of being out of control was, I used to have to get intravenous sedation, which was when they used to put a cannula of Valium, I think it was, into my bloodstream while I was getting my teeth even looked at. Um, so yeah, that was when I eventually decided to go back to the dentist and I obviously had to get a lot of fillings um, done at the time. Um, so this was me having to get them all replaced. I had worked eventually down from getting intravenous to getting diazepam um, and I used to, that was just it, I would get the diazepam, I'd feel a little bit calmer and I'd get the work done. Um, but this time I was determined that it was going to be me that got through the experience, not because of a pill. Um, and I did a, had to do a lot of work with the Thrive techniques before this, um, used visualisations, positive statements around the house and worked up to the belief that I could do this. Um, yeah, and by the time that came, I did a lot of positive visualisations in my head to keep calm. I kept telling myself I could do this, and I had to go back three times within a couple of months to get them all replaced. And the second time, I just sat in the chair laughing because I couldn't believe how easy it had become, and I couldn't believe that I'd been that scared of it before. Um, so anyway, that's enough of all those things. Um, but I hope you get the idea of how much benefit the Thrive Programme has in all areas of life. If you apply the knowledge and the skills to all areas, um, some may be more challenging than emetophobia in some ways um, to work with and challenge, but in a different sort of way. Um, but it's still worth it and the changes are real, they're permanent and I enjoy continuing to challenge myself every day, making the most out of my life, which is what thriving is all about. So. I hope this has been helpful and encouraged you to either look into Thrive yourself or continue with it um, if you're already doing it and um, continue with it and just yeah it, the light at the end of the tunnel is has always been there you've just maybe not seen it before so thanks for listening to me um, and yeah any questions just do get in touch with me thanks bye